The truth about salmon is that they need our help, and the Percy Walkers Hatchery is working to restore Wanak Chinook numbers in Rivers Inlet. The cold, stark reality is, is these larger fish, you know, these 30 pound plus Chinook, they're just disappearing. The numbers aren't in the systems anymore. We've in part with commercial fisheries, sport fisheries, and everything else have slowly decimated these stocks. And it's getting to the point where it's an emergency. The lights are flashing. If you're looking at the historical data of fish sizes and genetics, that's on the quick decrease. And these are important things that all of us need to adhere to. And if we aren't supporting and taking part in projects like the Percy Walkus hatchery in the Pacific Salmon Foundation. It won't be long until they're all gone. Today we are heading up the Wanak River with Ted Walkus, hereditary chief of the Wicano Nation, who is a prominent advocate for the hatchery. <laughs> the Percy Walkus hatchery um, is more meaningful than just fish. It's important to our nation for food security. A lot of those fish that we use in the egg take get taken back to the community and they preserve them for the winter. To the community it also means more than just food security, it also means um, employment. In the winter there's maybe 60 people so you know when you can give three or four different people some work you're making a difference. The crew begins their day by checking the females that were caught the previous day. They're kept in holding tubes until their eggs are ripe. If their eggs don't ripen in time for us, then they are released and hopefully lay them naturally. Next, we bring the buck pen up to shore. Every night, it's submerged to protect the salmon from the grizzly bears. Every task up here requires teamwork. There's a lot of heavy lifting. Oh my, you got it! When the bucks are ready to release their sperm, we bring them up to the egg tick shack to collect it. Megan is the assistant hatchery manager and is collecting all the samples and data taken from the salmon. The length and the weight are taken, as well as some scale samples, which determine the age and growth patterns of each salmon. you want science on this fish bacon? All the samples are put into a cooler and brought back to the hatchery at the end of the day. Okay. Now it's time to collect the eggs from the females, who can hold over 10,000 eggs each. Generally, it'll take up to 40 does to collect 300,000 eggs each October. Chinook eggs range in color from pale pink to vibrant red-orange and contain all the nutrients needed to support the development from embryo to fry, which takes between three to four months. Hey, Ted, you put some on that one. I am. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's for you. That's the Now let's grab the gill nets and catch some more Chinook with brothers Ted and Dwayne Walkus. Strength, timing, experience, and local knowledge are key to safely capture these enormous Chinook salmon in these stretches of river. The use of custom modified welded aluminum jet boats is key, as the river holds many obstructions, obstacles, and large rocks below its glacial stained waters. Knowing when and where to lay out these nets and how to drift them properly comes with great fishing and river knowledge of this unique watershed. A simple mistake of running over the ropes, nets, or floats could cause a total power loss if any of the equipment were to suck up into the jet pump. Floating and subsurface debris are always a concern when running swift rivers, so the team are also all on lookout for these obstacles.
This year, a second boat has been added to the hatchery's fleet, the Alvina J, sister ship to the Charlie J, both named after co-workers of Percy Walkas. Having the second boat this year not only allows the crew to maneuver the net more effectively to catch more salmon, but it also provides an added layer of safety. If something were to happen to one of the boats, the other is always there to assist. At the end of a long day, it's so great just to warm up next to a fire and have a couple of dogs. It's been a very successful day. He's got to look at the camera and say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But the work is not quite over yet. work isn't quite over yet. Let's get these trucks packed up and head up to the hatchery and fertilize these eggs. Megan's got all of the samples organized and we're ready to help. Water activates the egg, making them harden and starts the process of growth. A backup male is added in case the primary sample was infertile. Then they are rinsed well and set into these incubation trays. Once the yolk sacs are depleted, they are moved into the outdoor pens to continue growing. Once the salmon reach 3 to 4 grams, they are moved into the sea pens to imprint. They are transported in aerated buckets by truck down this road and to the river, before being loaded onto a boat and taken out to the ocean. The buckets are dumped into the net pens, where the salmon will gather information on their surroundings, which will help them return when spawning. In about three more months, it's time to release them. We're giving them their last meal of dried krill, and then it's time for Mother Nature to take over from here. Back at the river, more juveniles are being released. 25% of the stock are released here, and both groups are code and wired tagged differently, so the hatchery staff can determine which group has the best survival rate. If you'd like to learn more or to donate to the Percy Walkers Hatchery, please visit psf.ca.